Welcome to another Light Blade Learning Lab. Spring is in the air. It's time we had a bit of a clean up on the machine. Do you know how difficult it is to tie a bow behind your back? Now, let's get serious for a minute. Uh, if you can take me seriously dressed like this. You've got to love your machine. This machine not only needs a spring clean, but it needs some regular maintenance and attendance. If you serve it well, it will serve you well. So today what we're going to do is go through a little bit of a, a maintenance routine. Oh goodness me. Now I'm giving you the impression that I only clean this machine once a year. Not true. Um, it requires constant attention in some areas. Now other places you can leave and just check it occasionally. So today we'll go through, in no particular order of importance, the sort of things you should be doing and maybe the frequency with which you should be taking a look at them. Well, let's start from the busy end of the machine, shall we? Okay, so I've dropped the table out of the way for the moment. Just recently I've been making our top secret rubber stamp, if you remember. And that in itself produces dust because although the rubber or whatever the rubber binding material um, goes away, uh, evaporates, it leaves a powdery filler material behind. And as you can see, it's, um, <laughs> it's left quite a lot of debris around on the outside of the nozzle. Now if it's done that to the outside of the nozzle, I wonder what it might have done to the inside of the nozzle. So one of the first things we'll do is we'll start taking a look at what's happening at the bottom end of the system here. And to do that I've got to release the autofocus pen and we'll take the lens and nozzle assembly out. And let's have a look to see what's inside. It's always worth having a look down inside there from time to time. Despite the fact you might think there's no chance of muck and debris getting down in there, we've got a hole in the top here and, hey, have I got a cobweb or a spider in there? Hmm, that's interesting. We'll take a look at that in a minute. Because I only checked that about a week ago. <laughs> this is something that I do and you should do very regularly. Take a look inside and oh my goodness me. Can you see that lens? Look how much frostiness there is on that lens. Now that is a really, really bad sign. If you run your machine with high power with that amount of debris on the lens, there's a possibility that you could do quite serious damage to your lens. In the center there, there is an area which is a different color to that around the outside. That's the beginning of something pretty bad. That is debris that's being burnt onto the face of the lens there. Now this lens is covered with an anti-reflection coating. The infrared rays will actually hit that solid material and heat it up. And so they'll be heating up one face of the lens, particularly the centre part of the lens, and that material will start to get burnt onto the coating. Not only does it get burnt onto the coating, but it also reduces the efficiency of the light being transmitted through the lens. So I cannot explain to you how crucial it is to keep your lens clean. I would hope that your machine was supplied to you with one of these standard Think Laser lens cleaning kits. But if you didn't get one of these kits, then make sure at least you have some of these components that you can buy cheaply. You can buy this material, which is called isopropyl alcohol. I happen to have bought it in a spray form, like this. It's about six or seven pounds. It's not a fortune, but it's worth its weight in gold. Now, you will also be supplied with something called acetone. I buy acetone in one litre containers. I use it for other purposes as well. But the one thing you mustn't use it for is your lens. We should go back to this isopropyl alcohol and we will do some work on the lens. Now you'll all be, also be supplied with some rubber gloves. I don't know which is more dangerous, 
you handling the lens and putting finger marks on the lens, or the lens, which is basically a toxic material underneath a coating, which obviously makes it less toxic. So, whichever way you like to look at it, the sensible thing to do is to wear some gloves that are provided. Now, there are, other, some, there are some other useful things in this kit, which we will talk about later on. But we've got the two essential things out at this moment in time, which are the cotton wool bud and the isopropyl alcohol. And there's one further item that comes in the pack, which is absolutely essential, and that's called a lens cleaning tissue. Now, as part of your maintenance kit, something else that I would recommend you have. You can get these from all sorts of places, tool shops. You'll be able to buy them online from eBay or somewhere. And that is a two and a half millimeter drill. This hole in the end of the nozzle here is just as important as anything else. I know it's just a hole, but it needs to be clean and it needs to be the right size. Now, we will clean that nozzle up before we put it back on. But at the moment, I'm not going to do that. What we're going to do is to take a look at that lens. Now, in your kit, you'll also find that you've got one of these, which is a lens removal tool. Now, can I make a prudent suggestion? Before you do any work on lenses, do it on a soft surface. I'm putting some tissues down on there, and there's three or four layers of tissues, because if you drop this lens onto a hard surface, depending on what sort it is, it can chip or shatter. It might look like glass, and it is a glassy material, but it's not mechanically very strong. We shall need to unscrew the retaining cap. Now, the lens has come out stuck to the retaining screw because the retaining screw itself has got an O-ring on it and the O-ring tends to stick the lens to it. So, there we go, we've got the lens out now. Okay, now this is manufactured slightly undersized here so that you can open it up and pick up your lens like that. Now, you can clamp the lens and get to both sides of it without doing any damage to your hands because you're not holding any toxic materials but the more important thing is you're gripping this lens tightly around the outside so you don't have to put it on your hand or anything to do the cleaning process. Now do not use anything other than this isopropyl alcohol for cleaning your lens and just do small circular motions away from the centre And then when you let it dry, and you can blow on it, and you'll see that as it blow on it, it leaves a nasty little film behind. Well, let's not worry about that film for a moment. We'll do the other side. Now this is the side where we potentially are in the process of burning on some debris. Now as you can see as I hold that up to the light, I have given it just a quick wipe over but that quick wipe over has not removed the debris off the center so we're going to need to do it gently I've just left it for a few minutes the isopropyl alcohol and if you look you'll see that it has started to soften the material that's in the center there and again with a few careful motions circular motions We should be able to, and just there, look, there are a couple of, can you see the debris that's on there, look. And there are a couple of spots there which are really quite hard to take off. I'm not really scrubbing it, I'm just making circular motions gently. And that's why I've got this long stick, so that I just can't press too hard on it. This is where we need our cleaning tissue, because we now have to very carefully clean the surface to remove the film now we do the same to the top side as well. Now to put the lens back in, here's what I recommend you do. There's the screw fitting there with its, with its tightening notches. Put the o-ring on top and with the flat side 
or the flatter looking side because if you if you want to check whether or not you've got a meniscus lens fitted to your machine um, the best thing to do is to put it up against a line of text like this and try and read the text backwards if the text is distorted and it's not in a straight line across the middle of your lens it means you've got a concave surface on the bottom of your lens and that is something called a meniscus lens but whether it's concave or flat you need to put that side face down to the o-ring so we've dropped that back onto the o-ring now make sure first of all as we said that it's clean down the inside there and if you look in there you can see oh look I've got some cobwebs or some debris or something inside there which I need to remove. Don't attempt to put this in, drop the lens in there. Put the tube on top of the lens and you can then pick it up as I've done here with my finger. Try and keep it upside down as well like this because you've got a rubber glove on you'll find it very easy to sit the thread on your rubber glove and screw it in. That will make sure that the lens sits flat all the time that it's going in. Carry on doing it until it just begins to get a bit stiff. Your lens is now more or less home. So all you then need to do is just apply a very small amount of twist and you can feel the o-ring starting to bite. And as soon as you get some resistance, stop. Just make sure the lens doesn't rattle so you'll know that the lens is nice and tight in its seating. Now we don't need this isopropyl alcohol at the moment so we'll put the lid on because it does evaporate. We don't have any more lenses to play with so we can now put this back in the toolkit. This has got some debris on it we don't need that anymore so we'll throw that away and look at the state of that nozzle. There could be all sorts of debris on there and so this is where we need something fairly aggressive and acetone is nicely aggressive it's far too aggressive for lenses because it might damage the coating the anti-reflection coating that's on the lens but when it comes to something like this look <laughs> it does a great job of cleaning up your nozzle now those of you of a sensitive disposition please look away because some people can't can't stand this scratching especially with a fingernail I've let this nozzle get into a little bit of a state and I suppose I should have done this a little bit more often but because it's outside the machine and it doesn't really affect the performance of the machine it's just one of those love and care things. Before you destroy this lovely little cotton wool bud now you can use some acetone and clean down the inside of the nozzle as well because I'll guarantee that when we take this cotton wool bud out of here you will be horrified. Look, it's absolutely minging and yeah we've pushed all sort of debris down to the bottom there and with a bit of luck maybe the other end of that stick will pass nicely through our nozzle hole just clean it down the inside there with a little bit of tissue as well so we've now sorted the business end of the machine. Now before I put that back, now there are a couple of other things that are supplied in your kit. We've got a torch and we've got an inspection mirror. We can shine the torch upwards, just stand it on the deck like that and we can take a look in here at the mirror. Now look you can see that that mirror in there is not looking crisp and clean it's looking a little bit on the hazy side we will use some acetone because these mirrors in here are made of metal called molybdenum they are basically almost bulletproof you can you will find it very difficult to scratch them but still treat them like a baby's bottom very gently please we might be using quite an aggressive solvent on this but even so don't go mad there's the film that's come off of the face of the mirror acetone will leave a film on the mirror again with your lens tissue just try and give it a gentle clean all over well, I think you can now begin to see the torch itself 
the bright light of the torch. So that is no longer cloudy, that mirror. If you've got any doubt at all, you'll have to take that mirror out and give it a thorough clean. But I'm happy that that mirror is in pretty good condition. Now that's the most difficult mirror to access. All the other mirrors now are going to be pretty easy to do. And there's our number two mirror, and as you can see, it's not in tip-top condition. I haven't really been looking after that, have I? One of the things to note is that if the mirror is dirty, you will get debris burnt onto the surface. This is only just a very gentle haze on here, so it's not really a major problem. A little bit of acetone on that mirror. We'll fix it. I haven't got to go too hard. We'll give it a final polish with some lens tissue. And there we go, I think we've got a fairly clean mirror there now. And here we are at the back of the machine, I'm going to clean mirror number one. Now after mirror number one, there's one more important thing that we must do. And it's probably one of the main reasons why you've been given this inspection mirror, because it's difficult to see. And because it's difficult to see, it's probably something that you might well easily forget. Now here's our laser tube, just in the back of this brass piece here. That's a plain piece of zinc selenide, which is partially mirrored on one side, that lets the laser light out of your machine. So that's just as important as any one of your lenses. If you get material burnt onto the face of that window, let's call it, then that, damn, that debris will heat up and it will crack that window. Now I've actually seen this happen, where somebody has actually managed to produce smoke in this area and they have managed to occlude that lens. If you let it get like this picture, check the cracks out behind the debris. You've basically cost yourself a lot of money. It's a new tube. Now only ever use isopropyl alcohol on this particular window. It's quite difficult for me to get you a good picture to look in there, but let's just see if we can do it. There is just the merest haze on the front face. Just the merest haze, which wouldn't normally worry me, but what I'm going to do in this particular instance is just remove it. Better safe than sorry. It's going to be difficult to get to, and you may well have to break one of your cotton wool buds down so that you can get to it. Be very, very gentle with your actions. So as we can see, there's a little hint of yellow on the tip of that buddy. So we'll just poke some tissue in there. We'll put the cotton wool bud in behind it. So now we've got a lovely clean exit window on the tube itself. Okay, so we've done one of the major maintenance jobs, which is the beam path. And that's something you should check, as I said, fairly regularly. The mirrors are not quite so bad. You can check those visually every week or so. The lens is very important because you should check that probably every day almost, or every time before you use the machine, depending on how much you use the machine, of course. But it's worthwhile just dropping the lens out and having a quick look at it. The window on the laser tube, the chances are that you only need to keep an eye on that with a casual inspection, maybe once a month, once every two months. After the beam path, what's the next most important thing? Well, people say to me, what about the slideways? What should I do for the slideways? How can I, how can I protect them and grease them and oil them? Well, to be honest, uh, the, almost the best things you can do with those is nothing. Now, inside these bearings here, we've got not only lithium grease, which is basically on the recirculating ball track that's inside here, they've also got a flexible front here, this red front, along with something else that's in there, an even more flexible part, which is basically a wiper blade that keeps these surfaces, particularly the surface here where the bearings run, keeps those clean and wiped. And if we take a look at the end of my slideway here, you'll see what I mean. Can you see how the grease and debris has collected just here, here and here, where I've driven the head along? 
I would fairly regularly go along them and give them a nice wipe. Make sure you keep all the dirt and debris away from the rails. Now this is a personal opinion. But it's what I've been doing on my machines for the last two and a half years. And I haven't seen any signs of wear at all. So that's my advice. It is possible to get grease into these bearings, but these bearings are supposed to be packed with grease for life. So the great thing about a system like this, it has been well engineered. Although I've just said to you, don't put anything on the rails, I'm lying slightly because I do use this. Now this is a dry film molybdenum lubricant and I don't spray it on the rails but what I do I spray it onto a tissue and I wipe it along the rails. That way I've got a dry protective film that doesn't attract dust and dirt. And the molybdenum disulfide is basically a dry, a, a dry lubricant. So it's not doing any harm and it's giving my rails a certain amount of protection. Now the x-axis is a little bit more difficult to get to because you can't get to it easily all the way. But just do the best you can along the front and the back. So that's all I would recommend you do to your rails. Now, you know how much I'm in love with this thing? Not very. Don't forget the obvious things. Keep the place clean. I've been doing a lot of um, work with powdery stuff. Things like granite, slate, uh, the rubber, which has got some compound in it. Oh yes, we did Corian as well. And look, it doesn't take much for all this debris to build up in the machine. But here we are. This is just a little bit of love and respect for your machine. Let's not forget somewhere where we don't look very often. Take out the big pieces. Now, if you did follow my advice and make a a pre-filter pre-filter, then we need to make sure that we keep this clean as well. And this is the sort of thing you just can just open this front door and you can check this very easily once every week, two weeks, just to see whether it is clogging up. Because I've been doing the rubber and the granite engraving, particularly the rubber engraving, the powdery stuff has collected on the front here. This would normally be brown if I was doing wood cutting or MDF cutting or something like that. So we're going to take this out and all we do is just literally this and it comes out. Look how much stuff has collected on the surface there. Can you see that? Now that would have all gone and started choking up the primary filter in the Purex unit. Now the primary filter in the Purex unit is an expensive item to replace. What we're going to do now is for less than a pound, so we're going to just undo the four screws and we take this element off and there we go, we can see how much debris has collected on this filter element. Look at it. <laughs> and look, I bought all this for about three or four pounds. Yeah, we don't have to be too special about this. Because all we're going to do is to make it that size, just crick, clop, clop the corners off where the, where the screws are going to go. It does not have to be an artwork because nobody is going to see it. It's going to save you pounds. And there we go. It's all clamped around the outside now. But we can just pop it back into place. What 
what have we got to do on here? This is nothing to do with maintenance. Well, you're absolutely right. We don't have to touch this keypad, but what I would suggest you do is that from time to time, you press the file button and take a look at how many files you've got in your filing system. You'll see that it says one at the top there. Click up to the top, go backwards, and see how many files you've got in there. At the moment, I've got 25. I used to have 99. Manage your filing system on the machine because if you get more than 99, I'm not sure that we'll actually take 100. I think it stops at 99 files and says the machine has gone wrong or it presents some sort of strange message up which tells you that there's no file space available. Take a look at the files that you've got stored in here that you're unlikely to need or they were once off. Throw them away. Space in this file system is at a premium. So just make sure you include this as part of your regular, maybe once a month, once every two or three months, you'll come in here and just throw away the stuff you don't want. I now have got in the habit of, after I've used a file that I know I'm only going to use once, I immediately delete it. There are other things that you can check from time to time, things like belt tensions, but to be honest, they're not the sort of thing that I'd like you to change very much. Well, as I've mentioned to you several times before, this is a nicely engineered machine and really it doesn't need much maintenance. If you have a Purex or a Bofa recirculating filter unit, you only have to keep an eye on the display and it tells you whether or not you need to change your filters or whether a filter change is coming up. So there's nothing you can do about that. You have to wait for the unit to tell you. This machine, you could be proactive with your maintenance. And as I said to you, you need to keep an eye on particularly the lens and the nozzle. That's where your major problems are going to occur. That's something you should do very regularly. I can't say what very regularly means because it depends on the use that you put your machine to. If you're using it in production, then I would check that lens once at least a day and maybe twice a day at break times. Well, it's not much more I can tell you about the maintenance of this machine because there isn't much more to maintain. Um, thank you very much for your time and I'll catch up with you in the next session.